Hi, this is Dave from Steel City Flight Academy. Today, we're gonna to talk about risk assessments when doing a drone operation. So a lot of people, many, many people overlook the significance of a proper risk assessment. This is what we really do. This is a very huge component as far as our flight program goes to our students. Um, there's so many things that get overlooked, the finest details, and I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole, but let's just talk about some of the major components of what these type of risks can be. So what is a risk? It could be any hazard, right? Anything that's high, bridges are a risk, you know, you don't want to be obviously flying into a bridge, anything that the, a drone can hit. The number one risk that I always see people overlooking is power lines, utility lines, things that are very small, razor thin, that are hard to see. Those things can't be picked up on obstacle avoidance technology for drones. Other things include cell towers, communication towers, people is another component that's really overlooked. You cannot fly directly over people and trying to mitigate flying directly over people is a very important component. Um, flying over public roads and moving cars. You don't want to be flying directly over moving cars as well. Um, another really important critical element that is overlooked is private property. Now that's nothing that necessarily going to say a drone is going to hit private property, but uh, we teach our students and we go over this very, very in depth in our flight academy, you can't fly over private property without permission. That permission has to be obtained or our drone operators don't fly in advance. Why is that really important? Well, because um, you know, if someone can prove that you're flying directly over their property, um, they can sue you. So that's another type of risk, but it's still a risk. So there's a lot of things. Airspace, are you flying in, in restricted airspace? Helicopters is a very big thing for me, and I have tried to develop helicopter ears to try to anything that sounds like a helicopter, I'm immediately getting down. Helicopters are allowed to fly as low as 300 feet commercially. Now, we're allowed to fly 400 feet commercially. So, and recreationally for that matter. So there's a hazard there, and it happened to me many, many times that helicopters sneak up on you out of nowhere almost instantly. So those are some of the things that we talk about for risk assessments, and I hope that helps out a lot. And if you have any questions, you can also you know, feel free to join our Flight Academy. And if you like this video and you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our channel. And thanks again. If you like this video and would like to see more drone training videos in the near future, please hit and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Looking to learn how to fly drones like a professional? Steel City Drones Flight Academy has exclusive drone training content. So go over and check out SteelCityFlightAcademy.com for more information.